Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here with today's watercolour tutorial. Today I'm going to demonstrate for you how to paint this beautiful soft coloured summer sunset with a flight of seagulls. I'm beginning today with a piece of Milford brand watercolour paper, size a quarter of an imperial sheet, cold pressed and taped to my painting board. Uh, on my little easel at an angle of roughly 45 degrees, maybe slightly less, uh, and I just taped off using masking tape uh, roughly a third of the way up the paper, and I'm just wetting the upper side all over with clean water, because we're going to start today by painting in our beautiful sunset sky. Uh, I just popped my colours on screen for you. As usual, I will pop um, a list of everything that I'm using today in the video description below. But today we are going to begin with some raw sienna mixed with plenty of water. And you can see I'm just using my large wash brush to just sweep it gently uh, in horizontal lines into the sky. And the second colour I'm introducing today is some alizarin crimson, which I've watered down quite heavily here. Uh, it's a very bold colour um, and a very beautiful one, but this uh, sunset sky I decided I wanted some softer tones. Uh, and as you can see, it waters down to a lovely uh, reddish pinkish hue. Uh, and when mixed with the raw sienna, uh, it almost gives us this soft sort of salmony pink orangey uh, kind of colour, uh, which is really, really lovely for these sort of soft, dreamy coloured sunsets. And now I'm introducing a little blue. This is ultramarine blue and I'm just drifting it along the top part of the painting and just allowing it to work its way down uh, the rest of the paper, just pushing it in very carefully with the flat brush. Uh, you'll notice that I'm making only horizontal strokes at the moment, as I want that sort of lovely graduated feel uh, to the sunset. I don't want to sort of smear the paint around and leave too many marks. Uh, I'm using wet and wet uh, watercolour technique here uh, to get some really, really lovely uh, soft diffused washes. And you can see here I've uh, switched out to a smaller flat brush uh, before I was using a larger 2 inch one. Uh, this is a 1 inch uh, Princeton Neptune Mottler brush, a little synthetic flat brush. Uh, and as you can see I'm just using it to introduce a little more ultramarine just down the uh, bottom of the sky there. And just working my way up through the colours, introducing different shades and just trying to get a really lovely soft blend. Uh, of colours throughout this sky, but primarily keeping that blue along the top, lovely cool colour, and leaving this careful patch of white on the left side because this is going to be uh, where the sun is setting, where the sun is shining brightly. We want to cause the lightest colour there, uh, so that's going to be a clear white. You can see I'm just sort of pulling the paint around that little white patch, making sure I leave it roughly circular space. It doesn't need to be too precise, uh, but a roughly circular white patch will just give that glow of the sun uh, into the sky. And now I'm just going to allow those colours to sit and diffuse even further, blend beautifully together. And whilst they're doing that, and whilst this paper, as you can see, is still really wet, uh, I'm introducing my clouds. I mixed the clouds up using a little ultramarine blue mixed with some alizarin crimson to create a rich purple colour, uh, to which I've also added a touch of an opaque white. Uh, I used zinc white. Uh, but you can use any opaque white you have, or a little bit of white gouache if that's what you prefer. Uh, and I'm just, you can see, using a small round brush today to just drift on these really delicate little shadowy clouds. And I'm just following sort of the drift of pattern in a sort of a, a zigzaggy uh, pattern across the page. And as I'm doing this whilst the sky is wet, 
uh, the clouds are softening, the strokes that I'm putting on are starting to soften very slightly into the paper, giving it the, us those softer, uh, natural looking edges. And you can see here that I'm also varying the colour of the clouds. I started with my darker purple colour and now I'm introducing a little sort of softer pinkish red colour which I made by um, adding a little bit of raw sienna to the alizarin crimson uh, and dilating it down quite a lot on my palette and just sort of mixing it all up. Uh, and as you can see I'm just beginning to drift that down on the underbelly of the darker clouds that I've already put in. Uh, just to add some more texture, some more variety, uh, some more interesting colour to these soft, uh, pretty clouds that are going to take up quite a lot <laughs> of this painting. And just being a little bit careful here, Drifting in a little touch of cloud over that white patch of the sun. I don't want to be too heavy handed but it is always a nice touch. I think it, I think it helps the, uh, the sun to sort of settle into the painting and that lovely little white patch look more diffused and natural if you just drift a little bit of cloud over the top of it. Nothing too heavy handed but just a little bit of extra detail there uh, always helps I think. And for the last uh, sky detail here, um, I'm putting in a distant headland which is just going to peep over the horizon. I'm taking advantage of this masking tape to get a really crisp uh, line and just using a flat brush uh, and the same purple colour that I used for the clouds to just put in quite a strong headland which looks like this once you dry it and remove the masking tape lovely simple way to get a distant headland fading into the sunset over there. So now that the sky is dry and I'm happy with how it all looks, I'm beginning to work on putting in our sea. And for this I'm uh, starting again with the uh, small one inch flat brush using uh, primarily some very light um, sort of paint water really more than anything else. Uh, just a very sort of slightly purple blue touch and then uh, just sort of drifting that in along this right hand side building up the water and just slowly going to start building up more colour I think it's um, very easy to go in with too strong a colour for something like this I wanted the sea to reflect those lovely sort of whimsical glow of the sky above so I decided to start very lightly and then slowly introduce uh, more colour uh, the more that I uh, worked on the sea and I'm dry brushing here along the sort of the bottom as well and just leaving a few hints of white paper too just to get that little glint uh, that little extra little sparkle of sunlight on the water And this is a nice little trick here, I'm just using a piece of clean tissue to dry my brush off and then you can see when it's dry I can swipe through the paint uh, and the water that's on there and leave paler marks. Uh, the brush when it's clean and only damp, only just damp, uh, it will pull out some of the colour that you've just laid on and you can leave paler stripes in your watercolour if you are quick. Now that's one way to get a nice little bit of soft texture into uh, some water or the sea like we're popping in here.
And now to put in a little bit of uh, beach on this left hand side, I'm beginning with some really light um, raw sienna watered down quite a lot, just to get a lovely sort of nice soft warm glow to that sand. You can see I'm putting it in quite roughly and I'm leaving a little bit of white space between the beach and the sea and that's going to be uh, a little bit of white water done really loosely just where the uh, the waves are running up onto the beach uh, and leaving that lovely sort of trail of white foam. Uh, and in order to build up this beach I'm actually uh, dry brushing here using uh, a fan brush just to get in a little bit of colour and shading. Uh, this is a useful little hack, <laughs> or at least I feel like it's a hack to uh, get some really sort of delicate dry brushing without worrying too much about your brush being too heavy or full of paint and water and blobbing on too thickly where you want to just get a little just sort of scrape of paint. Uh, I use a fan brush instead. The splayed out bristles made for uh, some really interesting textural marks as you can see here. Uh, of course you can just dry brush normally using um, a regular flat brush if you're better at it than I am. Um, but this is, uh, this is one of my little, little tricks that I use. And so you can see I'm just using uh, a mixture of the alizarin crimson with the raw sienna and just building up a slightly darker colour, a little bit of shape and shadow uh, on this beach here to the left. And now just for a little bit of detail, don't need too much detail in this beach, I want this to be a lovely simple painting, uh, but just to uh, bring it all together, I'm adding in a small sort of tumble down, uh, half submerged breakwater, uh, just the remains of some posts, a little fence drifting into the ocean. So again, I'm using my small flat brush and just using that lovely sort of sharp flat edge to put in some simple lines that are going to just go at a slight angle into the ocean. And as I start to do the posts further out to sea, you'll be able to see that I'm leaning my brush down mostly on that sort of top edge of the flat brush and just getting a stronger mark at the top and actually not getting any mark at the bottom so you've got the impression there of the posts disappearing into the water. I'm just going to come back and fill in a few more uh, of these fence posts on land just to give a little bit of extra uh, shape and sort of structure to the composition of this painting. Again I'm using really really dark uh, purple for this that I've mixed up using the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson just trying to keep uh, keep within the colour scheme. <laughs> but of course you could use uh, something like um, a Payne's grey or a lovely dark brown would uh, work equally as well for something like this uh, if you fancied using darker colours. Uh, the brush that I'm using is a Da Vinci Colineo flat, uh, a little flat synthetic brush uh, size 12 in their range of sort of a small to medium size I would say. And you can see I'm just using it here to dry brush in a little bit of shadow just giving that extra little oomph to the shape of the beach using that little dusty purple shade and the dry brush of the, uh, of the flat brush there. And there we are, as simple as that. And now for my last touch to this painting, I'm going to add in a bit of flock of gulls. I decided I wanted a really sort of dramatic showing of gulls just drifting across this lovely sunset. Uh, it's a fairly common sight actually where I live near the coast. Um, quite often as the sun sinks you get the, uh, the sea dogs come out and scavenge along the tide line and pick up the remains of any sort of food that people have dropped and any sort of poor unfortunate shellfish that have been left high and dry by the receding tide. Uh, so this is sort of what I wanted to capture here. I'm going to do um, a, a basically a V shape of gold sort of drifting across the painting in quite a dramatic fashion. I'm going to make that really the, uh, the focal point of this painting uh, against the backdrop of course of this uh, lovely bright coloured sunset.
Now for those of you following along watching at home, you can add as many or as few uh, dolls as you like to your painting. Uh, I think I erred slightly uh, on the side of having too many, but um, there we go, that's, uh, that's just one of those things. Uh, let me know what you think in the uh, in the comments on the video if you think this is <laughs> slightly too many dolls uh, if you would have done slightly fewer um, just going to add a couple more just drifting down here across the sea And there we have it, the finished painting. So thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. I'd love to hear what you think of this one in the comments below. Uh, please leave me a like on the video uh, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this painting. Uh, and you can follow the link below to my Patreon page uh, for some more exclusive video tutorials plus uh, some free use reference photos for all you fellow artists out there. Uh, a huge thank you, as per usual, to my wonderful Patreon members who help support this channel. I'm very grateful for you all, and to all of you watching out there, I hope you have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to, whatever you're doing, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon in the next video.